This introduction to large language models is offered by Statlect.com, the free digital textbook on probability, statistics, and matrix algebra. Large language models are statistical models used to generate human-like text. Some examples that you probably know very well are OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google's Bard, and Meta's Llama. We are going to explain the basics of how these models work. Language models are trained on blocks of text. For example, we take the sentence Shakespeare was a poet, and we hide the last word, poet. Then, we train the model to predict the hidden word, given that it can see the previous words. This is a prediction problem. The variable to predict, y, is equal to the last word, poet, and the variable x used to make the prediction is the preceding text, Shakespeare was. Once they are trained, language models can generate long blocks of text. They do so by making sequential predictions. They start from a block of text and they add one word at a time, until the text becomes much longer. For example, if we start from the text Shakespeare was a, a language model may predict that the next word is poet, as in the previous example. Now, the new starting text is Shakespeare was a poet. The model can use it to make a new prediction. Suppose that it predicts that the next word is who. We add the prediction to the text, and we use the model to make a new prediction. We keep doing this until we have a complete sentence. In this example, after making four sequential predictions, we have generated a complete sentence, Shakespeare was a poet who wrote plays. Until now we have simplified things a bit, by pretending that language models predict entire words. But this is not always the case. Language models work with finite vocabularies that comprise the most commonly used letters and symbols, plus some other symbols that represent entire words or pieces of words. These letters and symbols are called tokens. For example, a vocabulary may be made up of a base set of tokens that contains all the letters in the English alphabet plus all the numbers and some punctuation. It may also contain escape tokens that are used to convert non-base tokens to sequences of base tokens. In our example we will use the backslash, followed by the Unicode number of the converted symbol, and by another backslash. Finally, the token vocabulary may contain additional tokens that represent frequently occurring groups of letters and other characters. For example, the symbol et may be used to represent the frequently used sequence of base tokens A, R, E. Before being fed to a language model, strings of text are converted to sequences of tokens belonging to the chosen vocabulary. Let us make an example. Take the email address shakespeare at globe.uk. First of all we need to replace the characters that do not belong to the set of base tokens. In our example, the at symbol is replaced by the escape sequence backslash 0040 backslash because 0040 is the Unicode code for the at symbol. Thus, we get a new string that contains only base tokens and the escape character. Now, we can shorten the string by replacing the sequence A, R, E with the corresponding token at, and we get the final sequence of tokens to be used in the language model. Here, to better visualize the tokens in the final sequence, we separate them with a space. Let us summarize what we have said until now with a chart that shows the basic workflow of a language model. We start with a block of text and we convert it to a sequence of tokens. To do so, we need to do two things. First, if some characters and symbols do not belong to the base dictionary, we convert them to escape sequences. Second, we replace frequently occurring groups of base tokens with non-base tokens. When our starting sequence of tokens is ready, we use the language model to add new tokens to the sequence. We predict one token at a time, we add it to the sequence, then we make a new prediction, and so on. When we have generated enough new tokens, we need to convert the new longer sequence to text. First, we replace the non-base tokens with the groups of base tokens that they represent. Then, we replace escape sequences with their corresponding characters and symbols. Once we are done, 
we have a new longer text that was generated with our language model. Now that we have provided an overview of the language modeling workflow, it's time to provide more details about the inner workings of a language model. Since language models are statistical models and statistical models work with numbers, the first thing we need to do is to convert our tokens into numbers. There are two ways to do so, and both of them are useful. First, if our token dictionary is made up of n tokens, we assign a distinct integer number to each token, from 0 to n minus 1. This means that a sequence of tokens can be equivalently represented by a sequence of integer numbers. The integer number assigned to a given token is often called the token code. Second, we typically assign a d-dimensional vector of real numbers to each token. Let us denote these vectors by e sub 0, e sub 1, etc. These vectors, which are also used to represent the tokens, are called token embeddings. They can either be randomly drawn from some probability distribution, for example, a standard multivariate normal distribution, or their values can be adjusted during the training of the model. Once token codes and embeddings have been assigned, blocks of texts can be represented by sequences of integer numbers or by sequences of real vectors. Then, it is easy to formulate the next token prediction problem as a statistical problem. We will talk about this in the next slide. Suppose that our sequence of tokens is made up by T tokens. Denote the tokens by the letter W. W0 is the first token in the sequence. W1 is the second token. And so on, until we reach the last token, WT-1. We need to predict the next token, which is WT. What does it mean exactly that we need to predict WT? We know that there is a finite set of n possible values that the next token can take because the token dictionary has n tokens. Therefore, we need to estimate n probabilities. For each of the n possible values, we compute the probability that the next token will be equal to that value. Clearly, the probabilities must sum up to 1. In statistical jargon, this is a classification problem. We have written down a pretty abstract formula for the probabilities that a language model calculates. First of all, note that, that we are conditioning on the available information, the T tokens in our block of text. Therefore, the probabilities are conditional probabilities. Second, the language model calculates the probability that the next token, WT, will be equal to a certain value, identified by its token code, small n. This calculation is repeated for each possible token code. For convenience, we denote the conditional probability that token t will take the nth value by p t n. We can now be precise about what it means to build a language model. A language model is a set of n functions f n that take as inputs the previous tokens and return as output n probabilities, one for each of the possible values of the next token. The n functions also take as an input a parameter vector, denoted by theta. The parameter vector is a set of values that we adjust to make the model a good one. The process of adjusting the parameters is called training. To make things more concrete, in this slide we provide an example of a very simple language model. We make a huge simplification. When we condition on the previous text, we disregard all the tokens except the last one, wt-1. Then we compute the next token probabilities with a workhorse of statistics, the multinomial logistic model, which is one of the most popular classification models. For each n, that is, for each one of the possible values that the next token can take, we compute a score STN. The score is the dot product of a parameter vector, theta n, and the token embedding of the previous token, WT-1, which is itself a vector. Once we have computed the n scores, we transform them into n probabilities by using a softmax function. In this manner, we have estimated the probability that the next token will take a given value, for each of the possible values it can take. Of course, this is too simple and it will not work very well. But it is a good example because real-world models are just more sophisticated versions of this basic model. 
The ways in which this model is made more complex are basically two. First, in a real-world situation we do not use only the last token to compute the scores, but we use many previous tokens, possibly thousands of them. Second, we do not use a simple linear function to compute the scores, but we use complicated non-linear functions called neural networks. Let us summarize what we have learned so far in a blueprint for a complete language model. We start with a block of text and we feed it to a tokenizer that encodes the text into a sequence of tokens. Then, we use a so-called embedding layer to convert the sequence of tokens into a sequence of embeddings, which are real vectors. The embeddings undergo some non-linear transformations, performed by a neural network. The output of the neural network is a vector of scores. There is one score for each of the possible values of the next token. The higher the score of a given value, the higher its probability is. The scores are fed to a softmax layer and transformed into probabilities. Then, the probabilities are used to generate the next token using a sampler. The sampler can be a true random sampler, a trivial sampler that always extracts the most probable token, or even something more sophisticated. The sampled token is added to the starting sequence to form a new longer sequence. At this point, we can go back to the step indicated by a star and generate new tokens, or we can stop generating tokens. In the latter case, we use a reverse tokenizer to transform the final sequence of tokens into a text, which is the final output of the language model. There are basically two things that make large language models such as ChatGPT so effective. The first one is the architecture of the neural network. We won't go into the details of neural networks in this lecture. However, you need to know that a major breakthrough was the introduction of the so-called attention mechanism. Attention is a parameterized differentiable function that roughly speaking allows a neural network to query the sequence of past tokens as if it were a database and extract from it only the past tokens that are more relevant for the prediction of the next token. The second thing that makes current language models so successful is their size. Researchers discovered that language models scale very well, the larger a language model is, the better it performs. But what do we mean by larger? One way to quantify the size of a model is by counting the number of its parameters. Large language models can have several billions of parameters. In turn, the parameter count is determined by architectural choices such as the dimension of the embedding vector, which is often larger than a thousand, the size of the token vocabulary, which usually exceeds 50,000 tokens, the number of layers in the neural network, which can be larger than 50. Another way to quantify the size of a model is by counting the number of floating point operations that a computer needs to perform in order to predict a single token. Usually, in large language models, the number of operations per token is several billions and in some cases it comes close to a trillion. Besides the parameter count, an important factor that contributes to determine the number of operations per token is the dimension of the context window, that is, how many previous tokens we take into account when we predict the next token. Finally, another useful metric is the number of operations that are performed during the training of the model. This number is often so large that it is difficult to read aloud. However, given the estimated cost of running the hardware that performs the operations, the number can be converted into dollars. As of 2023, for models such as ChatGPT, the cost was several million dollars. The cost is roughly proportional to the number of operations per token and to the size of the dataset used to train the model, measured in number of tokens. This size is typically in the order of several hundred billions of tokens, which is equivalent to several millions of medium-length books of text. Thank you for watching this introductory video. On statlect.com you can find more in-depth lectures, examples and exercises on hundreds of topics in probability, statistics and matrix algebra.